for me, what we're about to talk about tonight is something that is important because a lot of you have seen me, a lot of you know what I do, but a lot of you don't know what my philosophy of gold keeping is, my philosophy of and So my hope is not only that we can go over these protocols, I hate to call it a protocol, but a standard warm up, all right, and what we're doing in our session is to give a sense of what my philosophy of gold keeping is and what we want to see for the club in the long term, okay? So we're going to start by just going through a standard warm up that I'd like to see our teams doing. That is immediate. What you see now is exactly what it needs to be, but it needs to be as close as possible. The biggest thing you're not going to see in the warm up is a shooting exercise. Okay? That doesn't mean that it can't be incorporated at some point, okay? But it's a very small piece of actually warming up the keeper. Okay? My philosophy, what I want to see our goalkeepers be at the beginning of matches is in their most confident frame of mind. Right? After optimal playing preparation game time. They are not going to get that watching 80 balls flash by them in the goal when people are shooting on the six. It's not happening. And a lot of times, as coaches, we're going to focus on what our team's doing and the goalkeeper kind of gets forgotten. So we want to make sure at this point that you know, they're included in, in our thought process in the pregame. Okay? So a standard pregame warm-up. Okay? Most of the time, this should take about 16 to 18 minutes. Okay? So we're not going to be out for half an hour, 45 minutes before game time doing this. So we're getting dressed, getting the keepers come out, while the rest of the team is doing their other warm-up, right? I like to empower my keepers to handle their warm-up. Sometimes we don't have two, a lot of us don't have two keepers, so we either have to assign a player or assign a coach, if possible, right, to do the warm-up, okay? This stuff is not mind-boggling, but the idea is that we build the game pace, all right, and we build confidence. Those are the two things we want to get out of this warm-up all the time, okay? So, Rogers volunteered to be our player here. Caleb, you're the server. Okay. So the first thing we do is you're gonna do just ten to feet. So the first thing we want to do, right? These goalkeepers obviously have to play the ball with their feet as well. So we're going to start with just getting their touches in, right, times 10. And you can move them around a little bit if you want. <laughs> you know what he's doing. He's just getting the feet going. You knows we're not doing anything more than getting the touches in. Right? And, you know, I'm, I'm not worried about anything more. I'm not worried about whether or not, right, they're necessarily getting every ball perfectly. They're going to have some things that I just want them to just get going. So now we're just going to play the scoop ball, Roger. Everything's a scoop and a ball back. And we just go right into the next phase. All right, so we're really just tending not to do anything more than getting this going. And I'm letting Roger work at his pace. Coaches, it's not about us. It's about them. So my idea is, I don't care how fast or slow this really goes right now, but I want him to work at his pace, his comfort level, because it's his mentality. Right, and it's not a workout, it's a warm up. So if Roger wants to slow it down, slow it down, right? So I want him to communicate with Caleb. And after 10, now you're gonna take a touch and a play service from the ground. Just to his hands, just nice and easy. Right? And again, not worry about take shake. Just relax, it's out of the system, right? You're gonna make the mistake, make it now. It's not mind-boggling stuff to warm up, it's just getting touches in. But what I'm concerned about is the mentality. So if I see him make a mistake or something oh, like that. Oh no. <laughs> I would have said that. Hey Roger, it's out of the system. Alright, here we go. Right, let's get the next one correct. Right, let's start it out. Right, nice and easy. 
right? And again, I just want to get back to that mentality, right, of staying positive, right? Positive mentality. But we always want to end on a, on a stop, right? It's a warm up, not a workout, okay? And Roger, let me know when you want to just, when you've had enough and you're good there, okay? Right? And then I just wanted to take a minute to stretch, do what they need to do. For probably about a minute or so. Okay? And if it needs to be more than that, that's fine. It's about the goalkeeper. I've had some goalkeepers that want very high paced warm ups. They want a lot of reps, bang, 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 bang. I've had some goalkeepers that want very few touches almost, right? And they just want to be at their own pace. They want to be more relaxed. Whatever gets them ready. Whatever gets them ready. Rich, mm -hmm. how do I know what my keeper prefers? They'll tell you. You think? Or ask them. You be, most kids are pretty honest. Yeah. You know, and they'll say, yeah, yeah, it's a little fast for me. Yeah, yeah I kind of like, so just have that dialogue with them. Got it. Right? And for a lot of us, that's the thing. A lot of our kids, sometimes when I talk to kids, they feel like they're being talked to or being told what to do. I want to have a dialogue, right, with my kids, especially with my goalkeepers. Okay? Because for me, his train of thought, what he sees going into game time is the most important thing for me. Because when everything breaks down, right, this is the guy that's got the pressure on. It's a pressure packed position, really. Mistakes are grossly overemphasized all the time. Right, so we have to make sure that we're not adding to that pressure in the pregame. So the next part we want to do is what's called the shooting arc, which is what I do. You can do it several ways, but with only two players, this is what I do. So we'll start you on the 45 angle. So Caleb, you just bring your ball with you. And the shooting arc, for those of us that don't know, okay? Here's what I call an arc of influence that basically is a small arc, right, around the goal line, okay? And what I want him to be is be in his goal line and just receive balls around that arc. What we're looking for for goalkeepers, markers, all right, and things where they're going to find their ball line in certain places during the game. So, for instance, on the 45, some people put marks on the turf. They tend to frown on that now. They don't like people digging up their fields anymore. But if you can get it in there, put a mark down there so they know where the 45 is. Perfectly fine. Things that they can use so they know where their ball lines are can orientate themselves to the goal. So in this case, the ball arc is very simply, Caleb's going to play any ball in, low, medium, it's just something for him to handle, and you'll just lead him to the next part of the arc. So you just lead him to the next part, just get set, it's nice and easy, right, and just something where he can handle, and just move around the arc as we go. And it's simple, right, but we're looking for just basic handling, right, he's just getting his touches in, Left it. right, there you go. Okay, and again, when he makes a mistake, I just want him to cancel it, right, and move to the next one, all right, and go from there. And this mentality again, right, you make a mistake, you should like, get rid of it, right, you just play the next ball. And just come back around the arc. So we're going back and forth here, okay, and, hope, and just grab another ball there, that's fine. Thank you, Chris. Okay, and just keep it simple, right? Don't have a complicate. Just seeing the ball to him so we can get his touch. I just want to get a ball. I just want to touch the ball. And again, it's not overly complicated, but what's the mentality? Right? He's getting positive touches. He's getting a feel for the ball. Right? You're gonna, you can increase the pace of this if you want with a shoe. You can instruct the coach what you want to do if you want to go from slower to faster. But read your keeper. Some of you have really inexperienced goalkeepers. And just relax when you're done and stretch. You have very inexperienced keepers, so you want to get as many positive touches as you can. 
right? Some of you, the keeper may want to have something that's a little more challenging as it goes along. You can have that dialogue with them. See what they want in that piece, right? Hey, Rich, Go ahead. So in situations where you feel like your keeper is just like a little bit lethargic, I know that you said that you want to like let your keeper decide how they want to warm up. But if you've got a keeper that, I mean, we have a keeper that's just a little bit lethargic, do you not push the pace at all? You can. Right? But it's how you approach it, right? So like anything, if I go up and say, hey, Roger, you're just being late, you know, come on, let's pick it up, right? What's the first thing I'm saying to Roger? You're being lazy. Right? So it's how we approach it. But you know, I can say to Roger, hey, you're doing great, but you know, you got to get a little more on game pace, right? You know what to do? It's a whole different ball game. So you can push it. But we don't want to put them in that negative frame of mind. And I think about that because I see a lot of our goalkeepers that are mentally have some frailties. Right? We have some pretty frail mentalities going on. So we have to make sure, right, that we're building them. Doesn't mean it's all fun and games. Right? You'll see that in a second. We're going to increase their pace to game speed. But initially, early on, as they're just getting going, right? like we all do. We don't start at full speed in the training session, right? We work into it, same idea. Okay, so the next thing we'll do, and you know, goalkeepers that have some experience and have been to training know this, I'll either lead them to the goal or I'll take them to the side, whichever the better, whatever the better grass is. So pick a place where you want to do a diving seat. Right, and you notice where he's going. He's going to the best patch of ground. This is fine, okay? So what we'll do is we'll get them hitting the ground a little bit with a collapse dive series, right? And then we'll do a low ball series just to get them used to hitting the ground a bit. Again, not overpowering, not a workout. Roger's gonna come in and walk the ball. that Roger's attacking the ball very well as our goalkeepers that are doing training are doing and then just want to back pedal nice and easy. Relax, relax, right? You tell me when you're ready. Right, and we go. And again, I'm communicating with my keeper. I want to see if they're confident. I want to see if they're building, right? Roger's doing an excellent job here. I'm not overpowering him, right? I just want to look at the distance he's covering. This is outstanding. Okay, right, and we're here, and relax, and we just back up. And relax. Easy, take your time. Relax, right? And we got our rest. Right, so you want to do that times two. Now, if your goalkeeper doesn't know what a collapse dive is, you may have to tweak them. But keepers that have been coming to training know what a collapse dive is. They do it practically every session. They also know what a low dive is. They do it practically every session. Okay? So this is something that should be known. Most of our goalkeepers in their warm-up do this. They do the first two pieces of this every day they come to training. So this should be familiar to them. Okay, does that make sense to everyone? Okay, and Raj, when you're ready, let me know. And right now, if you look at your watch, if you look at your watch, right, we're about at a seven or eight minute mark right now. So we're about halfway home, right? Again, the rest of your team is warming up in their area, right? Doing their thing. Okay, you let me know when it starts to stay in the air. 
And again, just getting him used to the ground a little. Right? Nothing spectacular. And you notice that I know that Roger does not train every day, so I'm not going as fast as possible here. I want to make sure it's comfortable. Good save. Relax. And relax. I have that good save. And we're down. Good. And then I have him back pedal and doing a second skip. Okay? Again. If anybody heard the dialogue that I had with him, he touched the ball and then pushed the way forward, right? What my, what's my verbiage? The good stop is in front, the cover let's go. Thank you, good. The next piece is, we don't necessarily have to do so much in terms of showing. But there are also two ways to do this. It's on your sheet, okay? Most of the time we would go to crossing, right? If you have one coach, right, you're probably going to do three, same side, Three towards the top of the box, and so there was a ball in the corner, which is now gone. That's okay. There's a ball in the corner. We have a ball here, top of the box area, right? And then we would switch to the other side. Why do we have four sets of crossing areas? Right? Because there's different from the deep corner. Roger, could you show us what the position would be from the deep corner? So if the ball's deep in the corner, let's go use the ball on that side as your marker. All right? And it depends on the keeper, right, and their comfort level. This is fine. But you know, he's just about one step behind the center line. Right? And if he's perfectly comfortable getting back to the line here, that's fine. We'll have known that in training. We'll sort it because I've seen I will have seen what he's doing. He's obviously very comfortable here, but again. Deep crosses, right, tend to be one step behind. As we go up to the top of the box, right, the threat is it's actually more of a shot. So Roger's position is going to change on that, right, to more of this position. I watch goalkeepers in our warm-ups on corners and in games all the time. Most of them are out of position when they start. A vast majority are not in the right spot. Roger is there on this particular case because as much as there can be a cross back post, good players can also bend and shoot this ball. There is a shot saving scenario here. So we have to change the positioning of the keeper. So just by getting those services in, right, they get used to the positioning. What else do they get used to? Ladies, what do you think? What else are the keepers trying to get used to? In the service day, what do you think we're trying to judge? In regards to what, you You're right on the mark. Like wind, right? Wind. Is there wind, right? Is, there, is it raining, right? How's the ball react? Balls fly differently? Right, so you try and get a game ball. The ball flies differently, right? These are some of the things you look at. If you're playing at night, catching an air ball is a lot different than playing in the daytime. And we play night games, right? Yeah. Sighting the ball is completely different. Daytime to nighttime, we've been through that for years. Ball gets in the lights, it's a whole different ball game. Right? Somebody had a question? Or did they? Yes. Um, would you, is it, is it possible to change your goalkeeper's positioning based off of your defensive positioning of your players? Like, I do something kind of different where my players position themselves almost like a triangle. I want my goalkeeper picking everything up in the middle. Would I position them differently? I'd have to see it to already yeah. answer that question yeah. accurately. Okay, I want to talk but to you about But the answer it, is right? yes. Yeah. Right? So if you're doing, the question is, if you're doing something in particular tactically on corners, 
and you want to place your goalkeeper in a position based on that tactic, sure. Could be a totally poor tactic. <laughs> it could be, but it's your tactic, <laughs> right? <laughs> so we'll find out in a hurry whether it's good or bad, yeah. right? So the answer is yes. If you have something tactically you're doing that you want your goalkeeper to, to handle in a certain situation, for instance, that's part of being a coach. Well, I'll talk reason. to you about what I'm doing later and we can discuss. That's fine, absolutely. Keepers. So the answer is yes. Tactically, you're gonna do different things as a coach. So yeah, that's a great question. Other questions so far? Yeah. Yep, no, maybe? Okay. So we get our crossing in. Now, this is where I would like to see coaches, if you're gonna do anything with realistic shooting, this is where you plug it in. What time are we at? All right? 15 minutes in. So you, so you plug it in. What I like, and people have different philosophies. I want my starter to maybe get four or five saves and get out. That's it. Just <coughs> see a ball, see something live, right? Get up to a game pace, what it'll look like live. Get some positive touches in, finish on a save and get out. So the question is, only one keeper, who do you put in? Nobody, the coach stands in there, right? But you, yeah, I know, everybody's favorite, right? But think of what we asked the kids today, right? You ask your starting keeper to stand in there for 15 minutes while you're blasting balls by him. How'd you feel if you were standing in goal and somebody's blasting the ball at you for 15 minutes? Right? But we ask kids to do this all the time. Right, so we want to avoid that. So get those four or five in, get them out of there, and then what I usually do is I'll have our goalkeepers take some goal kicks, warm up their legs, 25 yards, 35 yards, 45 yards, get some punts in so their legs warmed up as well. Then I'll have them do something individual that they want. And lo and behold, it's game time. Because most of us don't start our warm up until about 35 minutes before the game starts. Usually, we got to check in, right? So this warm up in itself is about 18 to 20 minutes, right? They get their check in. We're about the 25 minute mark, right? They get their kicking in, right? Team talk. Off we go. Make sense? Okay. Questions on that? And again, it's pretty standard. But it's the verbiage and what we're building with the keeper. I want Roger, when the whistle blows, to be at his maximum best. I want him to feel like he can catch every ball. I want him to feel he has he's acclimated to his goal area. I want him to feel he's acclimated to the conditions that he's playing in. Right? So my hope is I'm going to get a great performance out of Roger today. I have another question. Yes. Go for it. Thank you. Um, sometimes, and I don't always do this, but sometimes with my warm-ups with my guys, I want to do something with shooting for them. Mm -hmm. And I want my goalkeeper in. I mean, I feel Five like shots, out he goes. Yeah, okay. Got it. In. Richard. About five saves, five positive. Now here's the why, right? I get that you want your forwards to be shooting, right? That's fine. But right now we're talking about him and what his maximum best is going to be. So you got your forwards have a great shooting session, 15 goals fly by him. What do you think his mentality is? I suck. Could be. For a lot of our kids, it will be. Gone. Right. Richard, are you going over this with the that have been coming to the training, this kind of warm up mm -hmm. process before games? Okay. Yeah. But again, we haven't gotten out to coach. And again, part of this today, and the way I'm speaking to you, it's, should, this is just my philosophy of what it should look like. It's not everybody's philosophy. Mm -hmm. I get that. 
but I found that from the youth to the professional level, this philosophy has worked very well. We've gotten maximum performance out of our goalkeepers. And again, it does vary a bit. As I said, I'm not really familiar how Roger really likes to warm up so much, so I had that dialogue with him, right? So I wanted to make sure it was at what he was ready for because it's his mentality is not important. Not whether or not I think he's doing everything 100% great. I have to make sure he has a positive mental outlook going into the match. If he has that, the chances of him performing well go up dramatically. But if they're going in and they've had that goal, I call it the goalkeeper beatdown, sorry, what I call it, right? And I watch goalkeepers sinking back to their line, right? Something's wrong there. And my hope is by changing some of this in the pregame, we're going to get better performance at game time. That's not saying that people are doing anything wrong right now. I'm just saying in my philosophy, what I want to see in our warm-ups, I want to see something that looks very similar to this for the goalkeeper. And it's going to be it. So, for instance, you're not going to have 10-year-olds probably serving the balls from the sidelines, right? So you may want to tweak that to something that's more workable, right? Where with the older kids, you should expect them to be able to serve a ball. You could almost assign a player to this, and you should expect some quality service. Right? For the age group, the level of your team, what they're able to handle, we have to tweak it a little bit. 